Hello everyone, I want to talk to you about how I control my volumes inside Cubase. Someone very kindly yesterday left a comment asking how I did this. Now, there's numerous reasons why you'd want to. Probably the main reason, depending on what bit rate you're working in, um, as a rule we tend in digital, which um, DAWs are, we tend not to exceed zero decibels, so zero dB. And what happens if you go above zero dB, quite often you'll get a red signal to say then you're getting digital clipping. Now, one thing you have to remember is if you like that sound of it working like that, then that's fine. There's no sort of wrong and right way. If you're happy working like that, then by all means carry on. This is purely how I look at changing volume in Cubase to make everything sort of work as I intended it to be. Now, it can also be the case that certain companies I work with will say, when you submit the track, it has to be at a certain level. So sometimes they'll want um, 3 dB of headroom. That means they want it to peak at a minus 3 dB. So they've got another 3 dB before it hits zero in order for them to use mastering effects and things like that so they can actually take my mix and improve it to how they want it and actually have a bit of leeway so it's not hitting zero dB all the time so they've got a bit of scope for their mastering. Okay, so probably the simplest way is if take any track and you've got the volume fader here on the left hand side on the left zone. If you can't see the left zone, remember these are your zones here. So make sure you can visibly see the left zone and you've got going to the left decreases the volume to the right increases the volume and if you press F3 on Cubase you can use the sliders here and if you can see on a on a sort of standard mixer fader a traditional fader can you see as you go down in volume it's much harder to work because here you've got bigger spaces to make the same increments of change can you see here they've actually put these notches there to show you that? Not that you can't work. If you're happy working down here and doing a fade-in or whatever it is, that's cool. It's just easier to work around this section of a mixer because the actual increments are much bigger. Okay, so we've got the volume fader there. Another quick one. If you've got an audio track, we can click Z on it, so that expands it out, or the other way of doing it is actually just drag it down and we can use something called clip gain now this is basically whatever audio event you hover over you can bring him down or up see when I hover on this you get these three sort of points appear the central point the, the square there is your volume clip gain so I can bring that down or up and as you can see the actual waveform changes as I do that you've also got fade in at the left top left and fade in, fade out to the top um, right, and you just left click on them, keep left click down, and move them where you want them, and then let go. And that's another way of doing it. So that's really handy if you want to just really quickly work and change, say, a vocal line or a guitar part or whatever, just little sections of it. You can use the clip gain to do that. Okay, now what I wanted to look at though is how I deal with all of the channels as a whole. So one way of doing this is I have to select all of my channels in one go. So here you can see I've got, here's my first channel. So I'm going to select this. So this is the drum channel at the top. And I'm going to select my last channel. But before I select the last channel, I'm going to press Shift. So you select the first one with a left click, press Shift, and then the last channel. And can you see here, they're all selected now. So there's a button inside the mixer which will um, enable us to make all of the same increment changes in one go to save us having to go for each channel. Oh, sorry. I'm not in the mixer yet. I was just about to come out of the mixer. So F3 for the mixer. And can you see here, because they're all selected from the main arrange window, these are all highlighted. If you got to your mixer, and they weren't, you can also use the left zone in the mixer. So again, it's this left zone here. And can you see here, under visibility, don't worry about why I haven't got these highlighted. These are um, separate outputs I made in contact, but we're not going to use them for this. Um, I can 
So here, again, my first track is highlighted. I can press Shift, um, click on my last track, and that's another way of selecting them all. Because what we're going to do is click this, which is Quick Link or Q Link. I call it Quick Link. I don't know what if that's the right term, but Q Link is called the button. So once you click this, say I wanted to bring all of the volumes down slightly. As soon as that's because that's linking all my channels, I can actually do that. But can you see I've got a slight issue? in these ones with the R because they've got automation on. And they're always going to snap back to what the automation lane is set to because we, we've set that when we were doing our mixing. So this is great if you're not using automation lanes because what you're going to have to do then is go back into each individual channel and actually go to your volume of each individual channel and change the automation lane in that, which is, is still more than feasible to do. But I would suggest making these sort of changes before you start um, using automation and things like that. And also, what I'm going to show you up here, can you see these? I'm going to show you how you can actually change the gain on the input before it actually gets to the mixer. So as it comes into the mixer, we can change the gain on the actual mixer. And let me show you how we can get to that. When you first get Cubase loaded up on a project, I don't think it has this selected, so it would be quite an interesting one to show you. OK, so this was probably how your mixer will look, more like this. Now, I've selected all of my channels, and then I'm going to go up here to Racks. Can you see it says Racks here? I'm going to use something called Pre. And as soon as I click on this, can you see it appears? Now, if yours doesn't appear, it will look like this. And it's a simple case of just clicking on it. And that's the same with any of the inserts or anything. If you can't actually see anything and it looks like these, it's a simple case of just clicking on one channel on the actual bit of information you want, and they all drop down. Now, can you see here, on each channel, I've got minus 5 dB gain reduction actually before it comes in to my inserts, EQ, channel strip and sends, everything. So I'm dropping the volume by 5 dB before it even comes into my mixer. I generally do that as a kind of rule. It's not always the case, but quite often I do. Now, because this Q-Link's still on, if you're still running hot and you're still getting clipping, you could perhaps try minus 7. And can you see now, because I'm working, all my channels are selected, I've got Q-Link on. I've gone to minus 7. Can you see each one is now dropping minus 7 dB? So everything is going to be minus 7 dB quieter, lower, before it comes into my master fader here. Now, or the stereo out, sorry, we should perhaps should call it the red one here. Now, one thing you have to consider with this, if you're doing this much later in your uh, mixing se session, Anything that you've used, so say on my channel one here, I've used a destroyer, so like a, um, a distortion plugin. Everything coming in is going to be 7 dB lower. So when it gets to this, this is going to behave differently now because I haven't got the same amount of input hitting that um, distortion plugin. So you may want to compensate by using the boost or the mix level as it comes in. And that's going to be the same with any of these because. I did this retrospectively, I suppose, is the, probably the best term. Um, so like on my amp sim here on channel 2, I've got, I've got 7 dB less gain or less volume hitting this as it comes in. So you may want to turn up your input or you turn up the volume or the master out to compensate it because plugins work differently depending on the amount of actually signal you've got hitting them. So do you see what I mean with this? It kind of makes sense. If you know you're going to record, say, 30, 50 tracks, and you know they're all going to, all of these add up, all of the volumes of each one of these to add up and then hit our mix bus or our master bus, it's going to be loud. So it might be worth setting your pre-gain at perhaps um, minus 5 dB before you even start your mix. That means that when you go into plugins, the changes or the edits that you're going to be doing within these plugins 
are going to stay uniform. Because the one problem I've shown you here is I was working at minus 5 dB. Now I've dropped it by another 2 dB. All of those plugins are going to behave slightly differently. It could be that you know they were running, you were hitting them too hard, and they they'll behave in a better way. But the chances are, with you've mixed with your ears at that level, and all of a sudden you've changed it. So it's a bit of cat and mouse how you go about how you do this. But any sort of volume changes, I like to try and do the majority of before automation and before I make my final tweaks to the effects. Sometimes I have the effects loaded, but before I go too much down that road, I like to change them before. Now, if I can just show you another couple of ways that you can actually change the gain levels. Um, did you? St if we loaded up, say, on this channel, so Guitar 3, um, we can actually, let me just click off these so they're not all highlighted now. Not that it matters, but and I'm going to take Q-Link off. Um, say on Guitar 3, I'm going to load up an EQ and frequency, say. If you've got these set and you're using automation and you still want to make volume changes, most plugins, or, or not most, but quite a few plugins within Cubase and within different um, manufacturers of plugins will have an output level here. And you can actually change the amount. So if you know, say you've got a, this guitar and it was running it was clipping, you were going into the red, and it was only the only channel, and you knew you could check, you could turn that one down, but you had volume automation on it, so every time you dragged it down, it flicked back like this. Hold on, let me show you on one of these. Oh, sorry, I'll move this. Um, in fact, any one of these green, so if I click up here, can you see it always clicks back down? So, you can override that, um, automation. The automation will still work, but if I wanted to take it down 2 dB, look at a plugin that's got an input or an output. In fact, output I would use more and just bring him down slightly there. That's another way of actually changing. So that will change the overall volume because everything coming into this EQ and before it leaves the EQ is 2.7 dB lower. So that's another way of doing it. And if I can really quickly, just a qu really quick tip on the output stage. So if I'm now, can you see here it's saying it's minus 5.7 dB peak. That's It might not be that, but it's say, for argument's sake it is. But we want to boost our overall level now at the end, but we still don't want it to go over 0 dB. Quite a handy little tool I use is under Dynamics, I think. I think, and it's the Maximizer plugin. Now, this is a great plugin for really quick mastering. So, if you've listened to your mix against someone else's before, um, you can obviously get stuff mastered, and there's all kinds of plugins you can use for mastering. There even is in Cubase. But as a quick fix, you want to bring your level up to the same volume as a, um, a commercial mix. I put this Maximizer on on the master channel, and then you can optimize it by setting it here and the output can you see here whatever comes into this the output is never going to go over 0 dB because it's what we call brick walling it hits the wall at 0 dB and it won't let it go over that so it actually uses compression to brick wall and that's our limit so it won't go over so quite often someone might say to you I want this at sorry 0 0.03 dB. And you know now, whatever, all of these channels are summing to this master channel here, this stereo out, and whatever that's happening, it's never going to go over this amount here, which is minus 0 0.3 dB. And we call that brick wall limiting. But the, this plugin does a few more things, but it's it maximizes the sound by doing things under the hood. But that's how oh, that's that's what I would use for you know as a quick fix just for bringing up the volume so you can play it against other mixes. I will do a whole lesson on um, what mastering plugins I use and don't forget sorry I just clicked on there as well to see if there's any presets you've got um presets for different mastering things as well so you could go master bus dynamics 
call and it'll actually make some changes for you. So you can actually try Light Dance Master and can you see here it's set to 0 dB so whatever that comes in it's not letting it go over 0 dB. So you might find if you've done a dance track and you just want to do a quick bit of mastering to bring those levels up to um, a commercial sort of volume level mix if you find when you listen to yours there's a discrepancy it sounds slightly quieter try these presets or try experimenting itself but this is really useful this little output so whatever happens it won't get over here you've got things like soft clip as well and that's how when it gets towards zero it we, we call it a knee but it will actually curve it off slightly you can put a soft on it if you if you find but it's a, it's a case of experimenting with that but that was just at the end just a little tip of how I just bring up the overall volume so I hope that explains how I use um, volume in Cubase to try and avoid going over 0 dB in my um, certainly in the master fader but I also try and control all of my faders so nothing really goes above minus 6 dB generally it's not always the case but when things here you go you can see on this this is a quick one I've done it's all different but we keep something that we call headroom on each channel in order for whenever it goes to your mix bus or master the red channel it's more controllable it's a bit like if you're running I suppose an analogy would be if you're running lots of taps and it's all going to go down the one plug hole by turning off the taps slightly on each one the amount going down that final plug hole will be less but it's a balance and remember whatever you do in that input gain and things like that if you're running plugins if you're changing the dynamics or the volume of that before it actually hits the plugin it's going to change the way the plugin behaves so it's a little bit of trial and error to work out the best way for your workflow but good luck <laughs>